Hey y'all, welcome to another edition of Hunker Down with Harry. I'm Harry, I'm hunkering down in my basement uh, with my family, my wife Jill, our daughters Georgia, Kate, and Charlotte, and our four animals, Lucy, Tuca, Nola, and Billy Finn the kitty. And we hope that everybody is hanging in there okay. Before I start the show, once again, I must thank everybody who's doing everything that they can to keep all of us safe while we are hunkering down at home. I've mentioned the doctors, the nurses, the healthcare professionals, anybody who works in the healthcare uh, profession, all of the experts who are giving us uh, so much needed advice, uh, the people in public office who are working around the clock to help serve, uh, law enforcement, um, janitors, um, anybody on the supply chain, uh, truckers, people who are working in uh, the grocery stores. We, we, are, we are so grateful and I, I won't stop saying that. You are all in our prayers. You're all um, superheroes to me and to my family. And speaking of superheroes, uh, I'd like to introduce a brand new segment called Our first superhero is an incredible man by the name of Cyrus Habib. He is uh, the Lieutenant Governor of Washington State. He is a cancer survivor, three times as a matter of fact. Um, the cancer left him blind from the time he was eight years old. Um, he's a Rhodes Scholar, he's a Truman Scholar, among many other things. This guy is like off the charts bright, the kind of bright that I'm unable to relate to on any level. Um, here's, here's what's so incredible about this guy. He is a lieutenant governor. He has an unbelievably successful political career. Uh, and I would imagine you know, there's a chance that he could become governor of Washington State uh, at some point in the future. But he's giving up his political career. Um, I know from being around politicians my whole life that it is a public service. It requires an immense amount of work ethic and dedication. Um, in its highest form, you are serving the public. It, it, it's an incredible vocation. And uh, Lieutenant Governor Habib is giving all of that up uh, because he wants to be a Jesuit. He is joining the Order of Jesuits, which is an incredible order of um, the Catholic Church. The Jesuits are a group of priests um, and the order was founded by St. Ignatius Loyola. I went to Jesuit high school. Um, it takes a super long time to become ordained as a Jesuit priest. I, I think it's like 10 years or, or more. Um, and here's what uh, Lieutenant Governor Habib uh, says. Quote, I felt a calling to dedicate my life in a more direct and personal way to serving the marginalized, empowering the vulnerable, healing those suffering from spiritual wounds, and accompanying those discerning their own futures. He's decided to abandon further political accomplishment in exchange for vows of poverty, chastity, and obedience. Quote, I have done the work of discerning that political life is not the path to happiness for me. There would be this hunger, this thirst, this thing that would be unquenched. Uh, Lieutenant Governor, um, I salute you. Uh, it, it, it's just remarkable. You are an inspiration to me and to anybody who crosses your path. Thank you for what you have done as Lieutenant Governor and what you will accomplish as a Jesuit priest. You are a superhero of mine. So one of the things I miss the most uh, being self-quarantined is being in front of an audience. I love to perform so much and it's just, um, I have a hole in my heart because I love to get up on stage and entertain. It's just one of my favorite things. Um, and since I don't have an audience, we thought that we would fabricate one in a little segment called Cliché Cliff. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is give you some cliches, 
but I'm gonna let them hang on the end of a cliff. Are you guys ready? Okay. <laughs> okay. Shall we do a countdown into it? Do we have a countdown? Okay. Okay, all right. Okay, everyone. Um, our first cliche cliffhanger. Now, I want everybody to be mindful of their health, you know, because an apple a day keeps the doctor. We can do this, folks. Now more than ever. It's all for one and one for. Hey, be kind to one another. What goes around comes. There's so much political blaming these days. You know what I'm talking about? It's everybody's fighting. I mean, that, that's just another example of the pot calling the kettle. And finally, ladies and gentlemen, I am loving all of this family time I've been getting with this self-quarantine. You know, it, it, it's like I'm a kid in a candy. We will do another episode of Cliché Cliffhangers on or maybe we won't, depending. Sh should we do a a another segment of cliche cliffhangers, folks? Should, should we at some point? Okay, we'll be right back. It's time for some audience questions. Okay, the first one is from uh, Carliv077. Uh, Question, uh, what were you and your daughter laughing at that was so hilarious during your Mardi Gras post? I'm curious to know because it was so adorable and so authentic. Thank you very much, Carliv. Um, okay, so we were down in New Orleans. Uh, I was riding in the Orpheus Parade and my daughter Kate was up there with me. She filmed me talking to Brian Cranston and I thought it was a really funny post. It was like Brian Cranston like f f photo bombed what I was trying to do. And I said, Kate, I, I wonder how many likes this is gonna get because Brian Cranston is you know, so popular and everybody loves him. And I, I posted it and then we got onto the um, float and we're riding and we were like, oh, I wonder how many likes that Brian Cranston post got. And I opened up Instagram and it had one like, I guess it didn't go through. And we just thought that was the funniest thing in the world. It's like seriously one person, like we thought it was up for like an hour, but it got one like. So that's what we were laughing at. And when Kate thinks something's really funny, she, pu she gets very physical and she pushes me. She almost pushed me off the float and she just kills me. She cracks me up. Our next question is from Keeley, California. Hi, Harry, what's your pandemic <laughs> hand washing song? I guess we all have hand washing songs. Um, Happy birthday twice is kind of the go-to. And honestly, that's what I do too. Um, especially since I've really studied how to correctly wash your hands, like in between your fingers and your thumbs and like 20 seconds. But the problem with asking a singer what their pandemic hand washing song is, is that I think I take myself a little too seriously. So instead of going like, happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, like that, I'm like, happy birthday to you, happy birthday. And, and it's like a minute and a half later, like my hands are pruning. Um, it's, it's not good. So I think I got to get back to the to the old way of washing my hands. Next question is from Shutterbug Shack. That's a cute name. In your new routine of staying home, uh, what will you keep doing? That's a great question. What do you hope we all take away and learn from this crisis? That, that's such a great question, Shutterbug Shack. I, I think um, this is just a great reminder to those of us who are fortunate to be at home, um, how, how important family is. It's really important. I mean, we all have our own lives. And, and what this is doing for me is, is just reinforcing how much I can't be without my family and how important they are to me and how much their opinions inform me. Because sometimes when you're in your own world all the time, all you have is your own perspective. And I listen to my wife and my girls and the things they have to say, I'm like, wow, I hadn't thought of it like that. So. Yeah, I'm going to keep 
prioritizing my family. And I think that's something, if we're fortunate to stay home, um, that's a really good thing. Thank you for that question. This is from Mom to Torin, Torin Drew. Uh, April Boggin, what's the most courageous thing, wow, what's the most courageous thing you've ever done? I don't think of myself as particularly courageous, um, but I guess you're asking, what do I think took the most courage? Oh, dealing with loss, dealing with my mother's death, dealing with um, Jill going through breast cancer, um, being a parent, trying to understand what my daughters are going through, what my wife is going through. I, I don't like to think of those things as courageous because that sort of implies that I deserve credit somehow. But there's a lot of stuff in my life that, that takes courage and we all know that. Going through this, going through this um, uncertain and scary time. I also have to say, I'm glad that you're out there. Um, we are all in the same boat, and I think we are all being courageous now because this is, this is unprecedented. No one on this planet has gone through this before, and we need to depend on each other, uh, and we need to continue to try to be uh, courageous and inspirational. So thank you for that. That's, that's an amazing question. All right, here's a couple from Facebook. This is from Diana Don D'Angelo. When you write songs, do you hear music in your head and then come up with the music first, or are you inspired with the lyrics first and then the music is created after that? For me, it's always lyrics. Isn't that funny? Some people would think that the melody comes first, and I have heard that some, I think Sting, I heard him say that, like he comes up with the melodies and then puts the lyrics. But I think the, the idea of the lyric is much more concrete than the music. Uh, the music is more r romantic in the sense that it's more pliable. So once you come up with a concrete lyric, for me, then, then you, can, you can make melodies and harmonies work to that. Although I do like to think up nice melodies if I can, I, I almost invariably go to the, um, to, to the lyrics first when, when I write music. This is from Marta Santa Maria. What a name, why can't I have a name like that? Seriously, even Marta Santa Maria Jr. sounds good. That's just such a great name. What is the favorite thing you do with each of your daughters and wife? Um, short answer, anything they wanna do. Georgia loves filming, uh, editing, uh, creating things visually. If, if she wants to do that, I like being around her when she does that. Charlotte loves to, uh, she's like doing a painting by numbers thing. I love watching her do that. Kate has a podcast that she's just launching. I like being around her while she does that. Um, Jill and I, we do everything together. We just like being together, whether it's cooking or, you know, Jill loves forensic, <laughs> forensic files. <laughs> like almost to a fault. Like I can take like four episodes in a row. Jill will like, she will put down like 12 or 14 forensic files in a row. That, she, am I right? Yeah, me too. You too? So Georgia and Jill are, have you seen the new one? There's a forensic files two now. It's like brand new. Like I can hang with y'all for like maybe two hours, but after that it's like, oh my gosh. Um, <clears throat> thank you, Marta Santa Maria Jr. Uh, next question is from Sandy Berkland. Kane, Kane, can. For years I sang my now 13 year old to sleep with songs from We Are in Love and would like to know have you ever considered making an album of lullabies? Yes. Do you, would you buy that? I would love that. Even songs like, um, You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. Oh, I would love to do that. Just little sweet songs. That would be so cool. I would do that for sure. I used to hold the girls when they were little and I go, I used to go, if you go to New Orleans, you got to go see the Arctic. Do you remember that? You don't remember that. Oh, you know what else I used to sing to y'all? Um, now this is the story of a man named Jed. And I remember it was one of y'all who used to say, sing the bubbly hillbillies. 
You used to call it the bubbly hillbillies instead of Beverly Hillbillies. Okay, last question is from Linda Degutis Bazo, Bazo Bazo. Uh, I loved seeing you perform at the Paper Mill Playhouse in The Sting. Thank you so much. Um, do you like to tap dance and how did you learn? Yes, I love to tap dance. I've kind of messed around with it my whole life, but I really learned it, learned it. Well, I was taught it by um, a couple of people, but the most, uh, the biggest influence on me is a guy named Luke Hawkins. He's my favorite tap dancer. Um, he's unbelievable. I have a video of him. He was in New Orleans in front of St. Louis Cathedral, which is where I got married to Jill. And he was just down there hoofing on the street. And um, I said, send me something. This was, I don't know, a year or two ago. And he sent me just a little clip. I said, tap, tap something real fast, Luke. And he says, yeah, sure. Check out my friend Luke Hawkins. How sick is that? Seriously, that's it's unbelievable, and that's like nothing. He can do, he can do so so much. Thanks a lot, Luke. Thank you for your questions. Okay, if you want to submit videos of your questions to me, send them to info at harryconnickjr.com. I will look through them with my daughters, and we will pick some to put on the show. Info at harryconnickjr.com. If you have questions that you just want to write. You can still go to my Facebook page, uh, Twitter, you can still go to Instagram, but if you actually have a video, you can look right here at, uh, send them right here to info at harryconnickjr.com. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. I'm gonna sing y'all a song. Um, I saw Tyler Perry, my homeboy, uh, on social media asking different people to sing He's got the whole world in his hands. It's a song that I love. I just kind of forgot about it, uh, but I thought it was such a cool idea. So um, sing along with me if you feel like it. He's got the whole world in his hands. 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 He's got you and me, sister, in his hands. You and me, brother, in his hands. He's got you and me in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. Thanks so much for tuning in, everybody. We'll see you next time on Hunker Down with Harry.